A painting like this one really benefits from layers. So the first thing I want you to do is just to open the window menu and open the layers palette. And when you look at the example layers here, we can see that some might be lines, totally separate, or a racing stripe, totally separate. Or it can separate the character from the background. Each of these allow me to work on an individual layer without disrupting the others. And then sometimes you might even just make a layer temporarily, only to be able to erase away part of it, and then to flatten it back down onto the rest. So there's a lot of different uses for layers. Okay, here I've got a layer shapes worksheet for you. I encourage you to download it and just follow along. I know it looks really basic, but we just want to understand what all the buttons do. So the first essential tool to go along with layers, I think, is the move tool. It's going to be at the top of your tool palette, and we just need to be able to pick the contents of one of these layers and shift it around. And you'll see how this relates to the layers palette. So first, I'm going to try and move the blue triangle. So I'll put my cursor over the blue triangle and drag. Wait a second. Hmm. Let me try that again. Over the blue triangle and drag. So clearly something is going wrong here. What's happening is that where you point on the screen is not as important as which layer is currently active. And so right now, these don't have names, but what you see here is layer 5 is where this folder lives. And so no matter where I click, I'm actually holding on the layer. So I can click and drag anywhere, and I encourage you to try this. You are moving the entire layer. Okay, so let's grab that blue triangle. The way I'll do that is to find the layer that looks like a blue triangle. In this case, it's layer 2. Activate that layer. And now I can move the triangle. And in fact, I don't even need to grab near the triangle. I can grab it anywhere I want. I'm grabbing the entire layer. If you want to add to your selection, you hold the Shift key. So I can move the blue triangle and then Shift click, also the green circle. So now I'm moving two layers at the same time. Well, now let's say I want to put the red square underneath the green circle. OK, so I'll select the, green, the red layer, drag it. Well, now we have a problem. It's actually on top. See how it's going overlapping over the green? Well, the way we handle this is the stacking order of the layer palette itself. So if I want something to be below something else, I just drag it below. So I'll drag it below layer 3 and let go. And now you can see that they've rearranged. So the stacking order becomes an essential part of painting. It's what allows you to work on the spaceship or the background independently without having to carefully paint around the borders. So let's go back to the Move tool for a minute. There are times when you have so many layers that you just want to point at a shape, like this green circle, and click on it and just have it automatically select the right layer. So the way I encourage you to set this up is to have the Move tool selected. And then in the upper left-hand corner here, we have Auto Select, Layer, or Group. The way I like to use it is to have Auto Select unchecked and to have Layer selected. And what this means is when I hold down Control or Command on a Mac and click on something, like I'll click on this green circle here, Control click, it automatically selects the right layer. So now I can let go of Control and I'm just drawing or dragging as normal. Try this again. I'll go for the blue triangle, Control click, OK, Control click, there we go. So this is an easy way to balance the control of working only on one layer and also not getting so cluttered here on the left. Now, if you want to name a layer, you can. So I could call this red square. And I did that just by double clicking on the word itself. But you don't really need to. If you want a copy of a layer, you just select that layer with the Move tool active, hold down Alt or Option on a Mac, and drag. And that just makes you another copy. You'll notice that the copies live on their own layers. So now I have three independent layers, which I can select by holding down Control and clicking on them. And finally, sometimes you want to work with them as an entity. We'll say I have this folder here. You might have been waiting for what the folder was going to do. I want to have three red squares in the folder. Easy. So I am going to drag them on top of the folder. And you'll notice there's already a problem. So I'm going to lower the folder in the layer stack so it's below the red squares. 
and then I'm going to drag all three red squares into the folder. Now I'll move the folder. Hmm. Okay, so just like before, it has no special properties until I put them into an actual group, a layer group. So the way this works is I will click and then shift click on all the four layers that I want to be contained in a group. And then at the bottom of the layers palette, there's a little button that looks like a folder. So I will click on that. And now I have something called group one. You can expand it, or collapse it. The really nice thing here is that I can now work with it as a unit. So here I have the group itself selected on the layer stack. You see it's still individual layers, but I'm going to select the group. And then I'm going to get the move tool active. And now I can shift the entire group. If I were to do free transform, for instance, which is control T, I could free transform the entire group. But they are still individual layers. So you remember, if I want to just grab whatever layer is directly under my mouse, control click still does that. So I hold down control and click on square and I can move it wherever I want. So now it's outside of the group visually. Well, if I select the group and move them, they're still all connected. So you see when you put items into a group, they just become attached and you can manipulate them as a unit regardless of their physical position. So I'm gonna put this back with its friends over here, but it really doesn't need to be. The other asset that a group gives you it's just a little bit of organization. Sometimes you'll have similar elements and you don't want them to fill up this long layer list. Well, a group can be collapsed. You can also hide all the elements of the group at the same time. So I encourage you to download this sheet. It looks very simple, but just getting used to the idea of selecting layers, duplicating layers, and then selecting multiple layers and putting them into a group these are essential steps. I know this doesn't seem like painting yet, but believe me, once we start painting, you're going to be using a lot of layers. So learn how this works now, and you'll be happy you did. And then when you're feeling comfortable, I'll see you in the next video.